Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? Yes, it's foggy out. So it's not just the camera, it's kind of foggy, gloomy. Looks like it's gonna pour down rain any second now. I am heading to the store to go pick up my glasses. Yes, this woman is getting old and she needs bifocals. And so I am gonna go and get my bifocals. And I am super excited to be able to take care of me. This is the first time in 13 years I am going to start taking care of myself. As I told you guys, you're going to start seeing some changes. Um, it's gonna be a little progression here and there uh, of me, but I am taking care of my medical needs uh, for the first time in such a long time, and it is such needed. You may ask why did it take so long for you to start taking care of yourself? Well, to be honest with you is because when I was married, um, I was married for almost 10 years and I took care of everybody else, never took care of myself. And as a matter of fact, when I had endometriosis, it took two years before I got into the doctor to get my hysterectomy scheduled. And it was only because I was unable to function anymore and I am at that point again where I am unable to function as a mom as a um, sole provider but this time it's because of false allegations and harassment by my ex-spouse and um, just flat-out lies to be honest with you guys I uh, am in poverty and I don't have no other option at this point but to take care of myself. My mental health, my financial stability, getting back on track, and refocusing my goals, and all of that has changed uh, since these allegations, and I am depending on all government assistance now to help me start my life over again. Because of the situation I'm in, financially, I have decided to just let the government tell me where to live, what to do with my life, where to work, how to take care of myself, and um, go back into the system. I was doing so well on my own. I was... Um, debt free just a year ago um, I am no longer that now I'm probably sixty thousand dollars in debt total to the point in my life where I'm just gonna do what's right I'm gonna tell the truth and I am going to follow God um, God has given me the family that I have God has given me the marriage that I had um, and I have no regrets I have no um, anger towards those who have come against me. I am just going to take care of me. And for the first time in my life, I'm going to do what I need to do to take care of me. And um, it takes money to take care of yourself. Um, and I'm only going to do what I can with what I have. So I am not spending lots of money on major surgeries and I'm not doing things um, that is going to put me further in debt. However, I am doing with what the government, you know, pays for and what they tell me to do. I no longer can function on my own with no financial support or help and it's all because of court battles and it's all because of lies. I have done the best I can as a mom but ultimately the attacks that are against me is only going to break my child's heart. 
ultimately it doesn't hurt me it hurts my child as a mother to see your child be hurt intentionally is heartbreaking and when you have no say as a mother anymore it's really really tough to know how to fight the lies and all you can do is take care of yourself I have never done without God has always provided I have had the most amazing job ever working at a daycare I loved all those kiddos there I miss them so so very much but my body physically has been broken I broke my wrist my elbow my shoulder last year I have osteoporosis I have arthritis I have osteoarthritis I have bone on bone on both knees due to injury I no longer can do the jobs that I've always done and I am going to have to figure out a way of refocusing the things I can do as far as a job and what I can do working at home. I have no money. No income. All I have is Jesus in my life. I have surrendered and rededicated my life to Jesus, doing what he has asked me to do, loving the life I have, being grateful for what I have, and doing my part as a Christian. And God has really given me the um, time right now with um, the court battles that I'm having to just change my focus on me. I have all the time in the world. Um, and I know that that's part of my journey. I'm going to be sharing this journey with you every little step of the way as much as I can. Without going into details of a lot of the personal things that's happening in my life. But I am going to continue to share God's love. And I am going to continue to be a witness. I am going to continue to show you guys what God has done in my life. And how he has helped me in my life. I have a lot of people praying for me right now. I have a lot of people supporting me and God is blessing me. Um, I am here at America's Best. I am picking up my glasses and I just got a parking spot in the second slot of the parking lot and it is packed. So see how God's blessing me and I'm going to pick up my glasses and then I'm going to come back out here and talk to you about what I am going to um, be doing moving forward when it comes to my health care. All right, let's go in. I am going to have to get used to these. <laughs> I love the color red. Um, these are bifocals. There's a line in between. This is my uh, first pair. I did get two. 
and um, I was walking, I felt like I was stepping on the concrete uh, down low. So I'm going to have to get used to these. Um, this is <laughs> ridiculous how uh, this is making me feel. Very wobbly and very... Um, I, I just, I'm so used to just having reading glasses from the Dollar Tree, but I did get to the point of not being able to have um, the proper eyesight, even with the reading glasses from the Dollar Tree. Um, I am learning how to drive with these glasses. Um, as long as I look down, I'm okay. When I look up, everything becomes blurry again. So I am gonna have to use my nose, she said, as a pointer. And that does take some use to, um, and she said, you really need to wear these nonstop for the next two weeks, just so your eyes can adjust to the difference. Um, like I said, when I'm reading, I can look up um, and have the bifocal part on the bottom. And then if I'm walking or driving, I need to look down. So. Yeah, it fits just fine. Perfect on this pair. I love them. Um, what do you guys think? Do I need some red hair to go with the red glasses? Or at least a little red tint to my hair? Um, so there's another change that I think I'm going to be going and doing today. Um, just going to go buy a cheapo box. Um, maybe at Walgreens or something here in a minute. Dollar General. Um, maybe. Maybe. So, uh, I really, really like the red, and um, so I will show you the second pair when I get stopped again, and I can switch this out. I did get two free cases. Um, they're just little plastic cases. She said um, you can put stickers on them or whatever, and um, they're good enough for me. I don't need no fancy um, glass covers, and I am going to just do one pair you know, at a time until I get really used to it. Um, but these are my glasses now. This lady is getting old. Okay, so as I'm making these changes to my outer appearance, I'm also taking care of my health uh, mentally. I have set up counseling um, for my mental health to make sure that I am um, doing what God has commanded me to do. I have gone through divorce care, I have gone through counseling with women at my church that I was married at. I have done um, Bible studies groups to keep me focused on God. And, um, you know, I am really just focusing on learning more about what God says. And so mental health in that way and being surrounded by other Christian believers who are like-minded is really the key to um, finding out who your identity in Jesus Christ is. Um, I can tell you as I'm driving right now, I am going to have to um, keep track of fog on these glasses. Um, it is cloudy out today, so this is probably a really good day for me to do this because it's not sunny and it's not um, blinding me. So, um, I just need to refocus, you know, I got the glasses to refocus on my eyes. Um, this is going to also help with me having a, um, job, but I need to refocus on what it is that God is calling me to do. So, um, I, uh, want to take care of my health, you know, and it started off with eyes and now I am taking care of my knees. Um, I am waiting on an MRI in a couple weeks and we were going to uh, schedule the surgery as soon as the MRI results come back. So um, yeah, you guys, things are happening and um, I have a primary care physician appointment in July. She is going to help me with my uh, weight and we are going to come up with a weight loss plan. So hopefully with the knees being replaced and the weight loss and the eyes, um, I'm gonna be like a new woman. And I want to make sure that as I am preparing for the future and what is getting ready to happen to me, 
I want to make sure that I am 100% right with God. I am 100% telling the truth. I am 100% um, taking care of the things I need to take care of in my life, which is me. And so I'm very excited to see how God is working in my life. Um, even though I do feel alone right now. And even though I feel um, worthless, to be honest with you, I feel like no matter what I do, it's never good enough. And um, it's hard to get help out there when you have nothing. Um, it's hard to get attorneys when you have no money. It's hard to get legal help. It's hard to get um, people who care when you are broke and you have no money. So, um, with that said, I know that God is doing something here. I just don't know what. And I do know that I am um, just going to keep focus on, you know, taking care of me. And... Um, there's a couple things that I would love to do for myself uh, one of these days um, to help. Um, I, I really would love to go to a Christian conference. I really would like to go to a women's uh, Moms for America um, event. I would like to go to... A Christian concert. I would love to go to things um, politically where I am standing up for parental rights. Um, I have joined a lot of these organizations and uh, I am focusing on my relationship with Jesus Christ. Like I said, I just want to follow him, do what he's um, asking me to do. And um, it's very, very difficult right now because Satan has attacked me and my family um, and uh, using my divorce as a tool to break me down. And I cannot allow that to happen anymore. And God has really um, told me just to do what I can do. And if I can't do it, it's not going to happen. And... Um, God is telling me to just let the lies be lies because um, he's going to take care of all those issues for me and I am just to focus on him and so you guys I am very very happy with what God is doing in my life and like I said I do want to share every aspect of this with you guys um, I don't have a whole lot of money and so I am going to try to take care of myself um, as much as I can while I'm waiting on this surgery. And, um, you know, I really am hoping that I do not have to have a weight loss surgery. However, I am a candidate for it, according to the doctor. So, last time I went to the doctor a year ago, uh, she did say I needed the knees to be fixed. And... Um, knee replacements in both knees and then they've also told me that I need to um, do something about my weight and so I I do need to do something um, I have tried fasting it worked but as soon as I stopped the fasting it all came back if you all have taken any kind of weight loss prescription from a doctor please let me know the name of that so I can go in and tell my doctor about that and see if it's something that would work for me I would greatly greatly appreciate that if you guys would um, do that for me I don't know what the doctor can offer or the side effects of it and I um, would like to try. I would like to try to do other options other than a weight loss surgery. Last Thursday I went to Jeff City, the capital of Missouri, on a field trip with my son and uh, we did a lot of walking. We went to the governor's mansion, we went to the Supreme Court of Missouri, um, I got some information that I need for future uh, court appeals and procedures and so I 
am very, very happy that I was able to go on that field trip. And I was very, very happy that I was allowed to, for the first time, spend that time with my ex-husband um, for my son to actually co-parent with my ex-husband. Um, it's something I have been begging for for the last three years is for us to work together. And that was the first time he has agreed to um, do something for our son without other people being in the middle of it. And it was so nice. We actually got a picture of the three of us together. Um, and it was such a blessing for me to just be there as mom and dad for our son. And um, it shows that it can happen. It can happen. Um, and, you know, I may think that divorce was wrong in my circumstances. There was no reason for it. There was no domestic violence for it. It was just a decision that my ex-spouse had made. Um, it's wrong. It's unbiblical. But I'm okay with it. I'm okay with his decisions. Um, his decisions are not my decisions. And, um, you know, I want co-parenting for me and um, my my ex-husband and I want us to be able to move on with our lives um, and I don't want to take from each other um, he doesn't agree with me on that he just wants to um, continue to um, go to court and continue to take everything until he has everything and I just think um, it's wrong I've really dug deep into the Bible about Christians and court and um, you know the Bible is very clear about how we are not to be divorced not to sue one another as Christian believers and how we are not to lie or steal or have an adultery we are not um, to hurt each other especially intentionally and um, you know, I am already physically broken. I am falling apart. My body is um, falling apart. And I am at an age where I am getting older. And God has really spoken to me about how I really need to focus on me and taking care of my needs. So here we go at the Dollar General. I'm gonna go in here real quick and see what hair dye I can get in a box and um, I have a couple dollars that I got from helping um, an, an older lady yesterday and so I do want to use that um, cash that I have for helping her uh, to do something for myself, to help build my self-esteem up and to help, um, me as I am, uh, trying to get over this depression that I'm in, um, and this financial hardship that I'm in. So that is what money I am going to be using. Um, I know as soon as I show you guys what I'm doing with my life, whether it's um, going to a thrift store or something, a lot of you say, well, I thought you were poor. Well, I am poor. I am very poor, you guys. I am not getting any uh, financial support from my ex-spouse for my child, and I depended on that money. Um, I am very poor, and I am no longer working, so I am very, very poor. But um, God has blessed me here and there from other people and like I said and so I'm going to take the money that uh, that I received as a blessing for helping someone yesterday and I'm going to do this for myself so here we go
All right, guys. Uh, this is why I don't take care of myself because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I do want to show you these other glasses uh, that I have, but I, I'm telling you, these glasses um, would look better with the other hair color I got. <laughs> I almost want to go back in there and get that other hair color, but this is for the plum uh, blueberry hair color that kind of makes your hair purple. Um, what do you think of those glasses? These glasses actually I can see better out of um, on the bottom part. Um, and they don't make me as dizzy as the red ones, but, um, there they are. Um, if I ever grow my hair back out again and I pull it up in a ponytail, I'm going to look like an old teacher <laughs> with those glasses on. All right. I do like those. However, um, these are the plastic cases that I got. Uh, I got two of them and, um, like I said, I'm thinking about putting a sticker on there. So these are the glasses that are gonna be my normal glasses. They just fit better on my face. And so that's why I'm choosing those. Um, let me show you the hair color I got. This is all I got at the store. You guys, I went red, cherry red, <laughs> cherry red. Um, I was looking at the pictures of the hair. So my hair color is like this medium to dark. And I don't know if you guys can see that. It looks like there's still going to be a purple tint to my hair. I'm going to have to be very, very careful when I put this cherry red dye on. If it gets to be too bright, then I am going to, um, I'm gonna have some major problems when it comes to putting that on uh, my hair. I don't want my roots to be this red. So somehow I'm gonna have to blend it and um, then just watch it cook. And as it's cooking on my hair, wash it off immediately. Um, it will not be like a, a long, it will not be a long wait um, time before it turns red on my hair. Last time I used red on my hair, um, it got red very, very quickly. And um, I'm not very decent when it comes to doing hair dye at home. I turned my hair green once doing my own hair trying to make it blonde. And so I do have the blonde highlights in there. A friend of mine did. Um, and I need her to do these again. But this is gonna be a drastic change for me. Okay, finally found my keys. you guys again walking with these glasses is um, very difficult for me and so I'm just trying to get out and about today to try these glasses on a little bit um, get some fresh air that is one thing that depression will do to you is make it where you don't even want to leave your house um, and I can tell you that when other people put you in depression when you have never been depressed before um, and you've never been on prescription medicine before and you've never um, had so much um, attacks and evilness coming towards you and hatefulness um, the depression will set in and 
this is one thing I am battling with my mental health is depression because of the circumstances of my divorce and um, you want to give up you want to give up and um, you want to pray for God to um, intervene and you don't know um, what else to do you don't know where else to go and you get very lonely and you feel very um, isolated from the rest of the world um, it's hard to fight for your parental rights it's hard to fight for what's right in the justice system when you are continually being beaten down by the system and one thing I am trying really hard right now in this journey of life that I am going through with my divorce is to try to keep myself intact, to remember who I am, who do I belong to, who's my husband, and uh, to rely um, and surrender to God. Let him guide me and let him protect me, let him provide for me. Let him do all those things that my husband um, should have been doing when we were married and he didn't. And um, I didn't realize how I didn't have that in my marriage. I didn't realize how much I needed that from my spouse. And um, now that I'm single, this is one of those things that I'm learning through my journey is I need a man in my life to help me um, feel good about myself. But I have God. And God is better than any man who can make you feel that way. And um, I really learned that there was so much in my marriage that I took for granted. And... Um, or I had high expectations going into my marriage that when those expectations of how a man really should be towards his wife um, I think I was depressed in my marriage without even knowing I was depressed in my marriage and I didn't realize it until I was divorced how depressed I was um, that's why I didn't take care of myself for such a long time and I let myself go I let myself gain weight I let myself have the endometriosis affect me in such a manner I couldn't function I had um, no will because of how my ex-husband made me feel during our marriage I had no self-esteem I had no self-respect. I forgot who I was as a Christian single mom. And so I hope this video is um, a blessing to you guys to know you're not alone. You know, I'm going through the same thing right now. Struggle is real, y'all. Struggle is really real. And um, I'm just living every second of every day um, as if it's my last. And... Um, I want to be a witness to you all. I want to leave these videos behind um, to be that witness. You know, God um, says don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has its own worries. Um, and that is for sure. Like, I cannot worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. And um, I need to celebrate today for the moment that I'm in. Not necessarily even for tonight. I just need to celebrate the moment. So in the moment, I got to take care of myself. In the moment, I am heading home right now and I am going to dye my hair. So here we go, y'all. Here we go. Okay, you guys, I'm at home. I'm doing my hair. I've got my hair dyeing shirt on. Um, and as you can tell, I don't have, um, grace when it comes to doing hair dye. I get it everywhere. It's all over my face. 
and uh, forehead here. <laughs> um, okay, it's only been like two minutes and my hair's already red. And I don't really want it to get any redder than this. Um, I really want to keep the brown as much as I can with a little bit of red highlights. I don't want it to be bright red. So I'm going to give it maybe two more minutes of setting. Um, this is not going to set for a long, long time. Um, but I'm going to be a redhead. Mm, I hope this turns out. All right, guys. So here it is. Um, my shirt's all wet. Um, I only left it on for two full minutes, <laughs> um, maybe two and a half. And um, I kept the brown, so that's good. That's what I wanted. I wanted to keep the brown. I didn't want to be complete redhead. I wanted the red tint. So I think I did it. Um, it's not blown dried and it's wet. Um, this was the most um, amazing um, smell. Uh, and it wasn't pneumonia smell like normal hair dyes. So I like that. The conditioner was so soft that I put on my hair and um, got lots of leftovers because of um, I have really thin hair and I don't have much, but I wanted to go darker, um, a little bit of red tint, which I think I've done. Um, I like the color. It's a little bit um, brown still. So I like that and um, I'm all really one color. So <laughs> I like that because it blended really well. Um, I'm really impressed by this. Um, I think it's gonna look great with my glasses. Let me go try. A little bit redder. What do you guys think? Um, it's hard to tell. I'm in the bathroom. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Hmm? Hmm? What do you guys think? Is it me? Does it look me? Like me? Um, you know, like I said, I just want to make myself feel better because I need to get out of this depression that I'm in. Um, but I want to be very careful that I don't ruin my hair because it is falling out already. I don't need my hair falling out anymore. Um, one thing I really think would look really cute with this color is a little nose piercing right there. Um, so yeah, you guys, um, what do you guys think? Um, I feel like I look more like my mom, <laughs> to be honest with you. And, um, I'm excited to see how this turns out when it's blown dried. Um, and, uh, let me know tomorrow in, uh, my new videos tomorrow, uh, when my hair's done, uh, I'll do it before I go to church and make a video and um, maybe do a devotional with you in the morning. So you guys can let me know how that um, turns out for you. But yeah, this is what I'm doing on my Saturday. I went and got my glasses and dyed my hair. And I'm going to watch a movie um, and just enjoyed some time to myself this weekend. So um, thank you guys for watching. God bless. Bye.